Hey, how are you? I am Tom Lee Roberts from the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy. And today we will be talking about art, visual arts. All right, and I am going to take you through some artistic techniques to assist you in producing your SBAs and also to ensure that you are very efficient in your exam. The techniques today will assist you in perfecting your craft. Now, today we'll be focusing on the expressive form, painting and mixed media. Now, for visual arts, you are required to produce paintings or drawings or sculptures. Now, all of these belong to a category called expressive forms. And the expressive forms that we are going to focus on today is painting and mixed media. In order to produce a good painting, you must have three basic things. One, artistic techniques. You must have some artistic techniques in your work. And the artistic technique involves stippling, hatching, etc. Additionally, you must have elements of design. And your elements of design would include color, texture, shape, line, value, etc. And thirdly, you must have some principles of design as well. Now, sizes, repetition, contrast, division, those are aspects of principles of design. So over the next few weeks, we will be focusing on artistic techniques, elements of design, and principles of design. The objective of today's lesson is to ensure that at the end of this lesson, students will be able to demonstrate these artistic techniques, define these artistic techniques, and effectively identify and utilize artistic techniques to enhance their pieces. All right? Art can generally be categorized or broken down into two main categories. One, non-representational, and two, representational. Now, non-representational art refers to compositions which do not rely on representation. In other words, they don't look like anything. All right? Abstract art, non-figurative art, non-objective art, and non-representational art are related terms that indicate a departure from reality. All right? In the depiction of imagery in art. So it's something that is most likely imaginative. It is not real. Now this here is a piece that suggests that it's a non-representational work. All right? If you look at it carefully, you would realize that it has a variety of lines moving through it, a variety of colors, all right, different textures and so forth, and those are indicative of artistic technique. And this piece was done by artist Leroy Clark, and he is one of the region most celebrated artists, and he produces a lot of non-representational work or abstract pieces. So another word for non-representational is abstract. So this piece was done by Leroy Clark and it's an abstract piece or a non-representational piece. All right? We also have representational art. And representational art refers to art which represents something. Right? Whether that be a tree in a landscape, apple in a still life, or a figure in a portrait. Representational art basically represents something, all right? This is a piece, Coco Dance, and this was done by Jason Ned. If you look carefully, and we're gonna get into it a little later, there is a specific technique that he's using in the back there, and that is called a scumbling technique. We're gonna go into that, all right? So he's using the scumbling technique, along with some impasto, and he has navigated the canvas in a very unique way, and creating some blurs. Now this here is a sort of glowing illusion that he would have created by softening the edges of the painting. All right, and these are some of the additional technique. This generally is considered to be a technique called sumato, right? But we wouldn't be doing that today. But this is another piece, and this is representational 
or it represents something, and this represents the coca dance traditional to Tobago. All right? So this is Jason Ned. Our first technique will be stippling. Now, stippling is a creation of a pattern simulating varying degrees of solidity or shading by using small dots, small dots, such as a pattern may occur in nature, and these effects are frequently emulated by artists. Artists try to do what they have seen in nature or duplicate. Now, have you seen an orange before? I guess you would have. Now, when you look at the skin of the orange, it is usually very rough, all right? And you would see some little dots. So the artists in the process of imitating, those little dots can be considered a stippling. So I'm gonna do some little dots here for you. All right, so if you, all right? So that is stippling there and you actually use Right, so you could actually use stippling to produce an entire piece of artwork. So I will I will demonstrate some aspect of stippling. Let me make a right. right. So you're using dots. All right, you're using dots to create the artwork. And once you repeat the dots, if you, you will be able to create lines, movement. So let's try to create a little image here so that you can see exactly how you utilize the technique to create an actual piece. So we are using dots and what we are doing is that we are creating a shaded area on the right hand side. We are supposing that this part of the drawing is the darkest part of the drawing. And I say darkest part because whenever you're doing an artwork, you want to show that light is shining on the subject. All right, and in this case, light is shining on the subject. Let us pretend that light is shining from the left-hand side. Let's put an arrow to indicate that. And if light is shining from the left hand side, your shadows are going to be casted on the right hand side. So we are using this stippling technique to create the illusion that this side of the vase or the item is darker than this side. And also you would continue and you would put your shadow on the surface there to indicate that there's a shadow there and you could continue all right so if you continue with this stippling here and keep repeating the dots over and over you can get a very very beautiful design using the stippling technique now the entire piece can be done using stippling and stippling alone all right so that's stippling And this is an example of a completed piece done using the stippling technique, right? So you just are repeating the dots over and over and putting them close at certain points to create that illusion of depth. And depth basically means how far or how close the object is to create and show the form, right? So that's stippling. Now, we are going to use another technique that is called graffito. Now, it is spelled S-G because the word is Italian, all right? So some people say scravito, but it's not English. So it's supposed to be pronounced as graffito. Um, Sometimes confused as graffiti, but it's similar but different, all right? It's a form of decoration made by scratching through a surface to reveal an underpainting of a contrasting color, typically done in plaster or stucco on walls or in slip on ceramics before firing. It may also be used in a, as a painting technique. It may also be used as a painting technique. 
Now, graffito, as the note said, is done by applying a color over an underpainting. Now, an underpainting is the first layer of color that you will put on a surface. Underpainting, the first layer of color that you will put on a surface. All right? And overpainting is the second color that you will put over the first color. So one is underpainting and one is overpainting. So to develop this technique, you put the underpainting first, and after you've completed the underpainting, you put another color over it after it is dry, and you would use a sharp or incising tool, and you will scratch the overpainting so as to remove the overpainting and expose the underpainting and there you would see the patterns being developed after you have removed the underpainting. So this is graffito or scratch technique. It raises the level of sophistication in your painting. So again, you put your underpainting first and then you put, allow it to dry, then you put the overpainting and then you use a sharp tool a coin, a knife, a modeling tool, a palette knife, and you scratch away the overpainting to expose the underpainting. And you would, this technique is called graffito, and you would actually see the design that you are creating developing while you go through the process, all right? So that's graffito. Now, we have another technique that is called wet and wet. So I will take you to another section of the studio so you can see exactly how the wet and wet is done. Now wet and wet or alla prima, Italian meaning for first attempt, is a painting technique in which layers of wet paint are applied to previously administered layers of wet paint. All right, so the final outcome of the wet and wet should look like this. So join me across on the studio table while I demonstrate the wet and wet technique. Now for the wet and wet technique, you need first to saturate your surface, right? You need to saturate it or soak it with water. So you use your brush, you put some water and you create some strokes. Now you can use any one of these techniques to create realistic pieces or non-representational work. All right, so we have some water, the paper is saturated. Now you then take your colors and the colors must be diluted. You add water to it and reduce them, make it what we call watery. And then you would start with your light color first and you could apply the paint, right? Apply the paint on the wet area, the moist area. On the moist area. After you've done that, you would then take another color. Let's say red, and I'm using the primary colors here red, yellow, and blue. You would take some primary colors and you will just apply it at certain points. You could allow it to drop as well. Now, when you drop the paint, or apply the paint on the wet surface, it creates a bleeding effect. It creates a bleeding effect, all right? If you look carefully at what is happening here, it creates a bleeding effect. And the colors actually merge into each other, right? Creating a unique, unique blend, all right? So this is the wet on wet technique. It's very, very unique and you can do almost, any. well, you can do any type of painting with it. All right, but the painting will generally be a flat painting. In other words, it's not going to be as raised as the impasto. All right, so if you compare this to the impasto, the impasto technique was a bit raised off the surface and was a bit more three-dimensional. This here is wet and wet and it is a bit flat. All right, this is going to dry and it's going to remain this way. So you can use this to do a background. You can also use it to do a very realistic or representational piece of art. All right, so this is wet on wet. And note carefully how the colors are bleeding. You could even manipulate it further, allow it to flow and so forth. So you could get desired additional effects. All right, so this is the wet on wet technique. And note carefully how the colors are bleeding 
into each other. Right, the other technique I'm going to do is a technique called scumbling. Right, and scumbling must be done using a dry brush. All right, so let's turn our attention to scumbling. Now, scumbling is a painting technique in which a layer of broken, speckled, or scratchy color is added over another color so that a bit of the lower layer also show or a bit of the underpainting also shows all right so let's go to it again it's a painting technique in which a layer of broken speckle or scratchy color is added over another color so that bits of the lower layers of color show through all right so you're utilizing the underpainting again and remember the underpainting is the first layer of painting that you would apply on a surface all right so that's scumbling and this is an example of scumbling if you look carefully you would see at this point below here you would still be seeing the underpainting if you look carefully it's there also in the background here this is a, a scene that is descriptive of a sea right it's a rough sea and a boat is in the sea right this is the painting here and these are the techniques being utilized the scobbling technique must be done using a dry brush it is a dry brush technique to manipulate art and to create a piece now this is we would have all we would have already produced or underpainted and now we are going to produce the scumbling using the overpainting. So I will demonstrate this with a little white and the brush is dry and uh, a signature of the scumbling technique is something you call animated strokes. All right. So you're using the brush in a very animated, some people say crazy way. All right. So touch the paint. All right. And you're using it very quickly. And note carefully that while we're using the paint, the background is still showing through. All right, so you can use this technique to develop your work to create realistic work. So, as it is at this point, I will turn the canvas a little in this direction, right, so that you could have a, a better visual of what is happening here. So, you are actually using the brush in a dry form right to emphasize so this is scumbling and it is done utilizing a very high degree of animated strokes or crazy strokes if you want to call it that so that's scumbling there dry brush touch a little paint and you apply it over your underpainting to create the desired effect now you can take this further add additional color and actually develop an entire piece using whatever palette you have all right so this is just a simple example of how you scumble over an underpainting or scumble and utilize the technique so that you can produce a painting with a different level of sophistication right so that's scumbling another technique is a technique that is called the impasto technique now impasto means paste so you are actually pasting on the paint in a very unique way and that is how you develop the artistic technique now impasto is a technique using painting where paint is laid on an area or a surface in a very thick layer or thick layers usually thick enough that the brush or paint in knife strokes are visible paint can also be mixed right on the canvas and when dry the impasto provide texture so it's going to feel very rough or smooth as the case might be exactly how you put the the the, the paint on you would see some sort of result all right the paint appears to be coming out of the canvas and also appears as three dimensional all right so that's the impasto technique now there's an easy way i like to tell students to remember the impasto technique now if you look on the left you will see you're seeing a, a flower here 
right? And the flour is done using the impasto technique. Now you can use your palette knife to create the impasto technique or you can use a paintbrush to do it as well, all right? And you are using the paint in thick chunks and applying it onto the surface. Now, I usually tell students to remember this, just say, it's as though I'm putting peanut butter on bread. You know, you could compare it to that. You normally take up big chunks of peanut butter and put it on the bread and spread it out nicely. It's the same process, but only at this time, you are now actually creating a painting. So impasto is a paste technique. You apply the paint in thick chunks and you can complete an entire painting using this technique. Now, as you produce your artwork, you may choose to combine techniques. Now, if you look across on this painting, if you look across on this painting, you would realize that the right hand side of the painting, you would see a lot of impasto techniques being utilized there. It's a very useful technique for demonstrating textures. So this is impasto, and you're actually pasting on the paint using the palette knife or using the brush. You can add additional colors if needs be. It's just as though you're painting with a paintbrush, but you are just using a different tool. So if you look carefully, you will then see that this is now developing into something that you could actually recognize. All right, and it's a, a little tree on a little piece of landform and you could manipulate the tool in different ways now let's try to create some foliage grass right by just manipulating the tool so this is the impasto technique and applying the paint as though you're applying peanut butter onto bread so it's a paste technique so impasto means paste so that's impasto right we have another technique hatching and hatching is an artistic technique used to create tonal or shading effect in other words it creates darkness and lightness on the painting or the drawing right so it's an artistic technique used to create tonal or shading effects by drawing closely spaced parallel lines when these lines are placed at an angle to one another it is called cross hatching so i'm going to demonstrate the process of cross hatching so that you would have a greater understanding as to how it is done and how you can utilize it in your work All right this is an example of cross hatching here note carefully the diagonal lines and they also cross and this is cross hatching note carefully also that the left side of this object is lighter and the right side is darker, thus indicating that light is coming from the left and the shadows are being casted on the right. So this is an example of cross hatching and utilizing these techniques would indeed add some sophistication to your work and it would really make the work exciting, add some depth to it and make it more meaningful. If you look here, you can see this is a portrait of a very famous movie star, right? But look carefully at how the artist utilize all the variety of lines and so forth and it is showing contrast. The hair is darker, the face has different tones and so forth different values so you're seeing all of that from just utilizing a simple technique such as hatching so this is an example of hatching now i'll do one more technique for today and that technique is collage making now collage is a technique of art Collage is a technique of art production where the artwork is created using an assemblage of different forms and shapes using paper, fabric, or other suitable material. These forms and shapes eventually create a whole image. Now, it says assemblage, and from what your teachers would have been doing with you, you are very aware that you have a technique called assemblage as well. An assemblage is where you actually take pieces of thing and put them or assemble them together to create something. So you are using the paper or the cloth or whatever material you're using and you 
tear it up, cut it up, and then if you have a design already, let's say you have, let's say you have a design like this, right? And you would like to use collage technique to fill this area. You could get a piece of paper, tear up that piece of paper, put some glue to it, and you could stick it to fill this area. So sometimes you can use paint, but you do not always have to use paint. There are other tools that you could use, all right? So collage is an additional technique that you can use in producing your artwork. Now, the question for CXC in terms of visual arts would somehow read like this. It would say, create a painting or a pictorial abstract that is based on a specific theme, right? Using appropriate techniques such as stippling, hatching, collage making, produce a painting based on the specific theme, right? So collage making, you can do an entire piece with collage or you can use different techniques to produce this piece, all right? So this is an example of a collage piece and this was done by using cut magazine you take an old magazine discarded material and you show aspect of recycling because the artist must be sensitive to our environment so recycling old magazines and creating useful art is indeed something that we all should be looking at so this is a piece of a church done with discarded material all right so we have looked at several techniques today and I want you all to continue practicing so that you will be able to perfect your craft and any combination of these artistic technique would make your work outstanding. Now remember there are some other things that we need to look at. We also need to look at the artistic techniques and the principles of design. So at our next session, we will be looking at artistic techniques and principle of design. And once you combine any two of those three, then you will definitely produce a magnificent piece, second to none. So this here, we are looking at a, a painting that was done by artist Tom Roberts. That's me, I did it. And um, this painting utilizes a variety of color a variety of line and also textures. If you look at this point, you would see the same impasto technique that we spoke about earlier. The one that we demonstrated is also utilizing these portions of the painting across to the right as well. So it's important to utilize this technique in your painting to raise the level of sophistication, gives you a, a very good quality. If you look here, there is also some scumbling here as well. So this is an example of a representational piece of art it represents something this is indeed the annosville water wheel and it utilizes a variety of artistic techniques all right so you can use the techniques to assist you in developing your work all right and this is another piece and this piece is more along the line of non-representational all right now it's actually a mix but it's going to be categorized as non-representational because it is more on the realm of abstraction, all right? Lines, shapes, colors. Um, if you want to say put haphazardly all over the place, right? But nonetheless, it has elements of design, principles of design, artistic technique, and these are the techniques that make your work stand out, all right? So this is an example of a non-representational. And our final piece for today, and our final piece for today is a river scene done by Jason Ned. Jason Ned is a Tobagonian artist. And if you look carefully here, you would realize that it has a combination of scumbling. We are still seeing the underpainting. In fact, this painting was done on a red canvas. So if you look carefully, you would see the red, the background or the underpainting still there. If you look again, you would also see that he did some aspect of graffito or scratch technique so he did in fact scratch some areas within this piece so this is a beautiful piece as well and this was done by jason net so remember once you utilize the techniques you can produce a magnificent piece of work and you could make your work move from ordinary to 
extraordinary. So join us next week at the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy, where we could continue our e-learning program and take our art and our education to the next level. See you then.